Hey guys, and welcome back to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In this part, we're doing more shenanigans in the Glitz Pit, and I believe, I actually believe we get through almost everything up to the, to the end of the chapter. Like, I think, uh, at the end of this, uh, video, we prepare for a match against the champ, John, I mean, Rockhawk. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Rockhawk! <laughs> okay, I knew that oh, first yeah. reference, I don't know that second one. <laughs> It's like it's the opening lyric to his song, which nobody can fucking understand. What song? <laughs> oh, the oh the John Cena song. Mm -hmm. I thought the John Cena song was just. Bam, 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 bam. Man, that guy down in the corner has such an unfair advantage for wrestling. I mean, he's got a spike on his shawl. <laughs> <laughs> That's just his natural biology. Yeah, like I, I kind of, I kind of wonder. Well, I mean, you say that, but then we're allowed to bring. All sorts of random crap into a into a into a, well, the ring. Well, you know, not only does he have a spike on his shell, but his limbs are too short to you know submit to get him in a submission hold. <laughs> so it's like it's it's like literally wrestling with spiked ball. <laughs> <laughs> how do I get this to submit? <laughs> well, I mean, like how it'd be kind of weird watching him pin somebody because he'd just kind of be sitting on top of him. <laughs> Well, like, oh, you could do that. Wait, like, you, you can know, just like sit, I... like you could just flat up sit on top of a wrestler until they until they go down. A pin's a pin, <laughs> as long yeah. as their shoulders are down. <laughs> Damn, this book always skips the important stuff. How do they carry endless hammers? Ah, but man, we're halfway through the game and we're finally running into a hammer, bro. Oh well, no, we're not halfway through the game yet. We're, we'll be halfway through the game once we uh, once we get to through chapter four. Um, uh, we're still in the first. Yeah. We're probably still. In the I wasn't first. being precise. <laughs> well, but still, it's better. One thing I do like about this game is, is, as opposed to the original Paper Mario, is that you start seeing Bowser's more elite mooks earlier in the game. Like, I've uh, got no idea why the hell they're bothering us because we're not fighting Bowser, but whatever, they're dicks. Um, you could be fighting Bowser. Yeah, but uh, you'll you'll start to see Hammer Brothers and stuff in the in the Rogueport sewers, like starting with like Chapter Five, I think. When you didn't see Hammer Brothers and uh, Magikoopas until Chapter 8 in the first Paper Mario game, which is really late. So, uh, I do think that they... I think enemy variety, just in general, is better than Thousand Year Door. Um, you know, they've got a lot of new enemies. They've got a lot of enemies that are specific to, to chapters. Like, again, like the Glitz Pit. Like, there are uh, a few repeating enemies, but there's quite a few enemies that we haven't, um, that we haven't uh, seen before and we won't see again because they're only ever in this area, so... I think the, the switch to from cartridges to CDs really helped in terms of how much they could fit inside the disc, even though the GameCube uh, disc by itself was quite small compared to a DVD. Oh, well, yeah, it's still miles ahead of a cartridge. Uh, it's still miles ahead of a cartridge. In fact, that's originally why that's why Sony uh, jumped from... Um, no, uh, Squaresoft it jumped from Nintendo to Sony because... They feel that they felt they could do more on the PlayStation than on the N sixty four. Oh yeah, for with sure. Final Fantasy. Yeah, just generally like it's not even like you could even do the disc swappy thing that they did in the the Final Fantasy games or I a think lot that's of. That's the first games. time I've ever seen you actually miss that, Ted. I know. Well, I've I, the the N sixty four had uh, one particular shortcoming apart from cartridges, and that was um, uh, sound and video quality. Uh, never quite matched up with the CD-based gaming console. No. Which is why, like, uh, the like the N64 version of um, of Gex Enter the Gecko didn't have quite as many voice clips and didn't have the CG videos. Yeah. Um, but no. it had more processing power, I think, is, is it? So, like... Yeah, I think, by technicality, the N64 was more powerful than the PlayStation. But... But, it, you know, you can only do so much with the limited space you're given. Yeah. And not uh, to mention, but but, it, but, it, but it, you know what? It really does make all uh, like achievements like Resident Evil Two on the N sixty four all the more impressive. What for yeah. what it Resident what it managed Evil, to cram? Is it just the? Is it just basically the same game on the N sixty four? The N sixty four version of Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil Two, was it? Yeah, uh, I think it had. Uh, was that the version with full analog control? I believe it. It would have to because you only have an analog stick for. No, I mean like. Um, it, it, Without the t there was a there was an option to play without tank controls. Oh, I, I don't know. I know one version of Resident Evil Two had that, 
and I know that version was not the version they used for the GameCube version, more than pity. <laughs> but uh, it kind of controlled like uh, the the recent re-release of uh, the Resident Evil 1 remake, where oh, you yeah. have the option to say no to tank controls and just control based on where your ca- character is with the camera, which frankly makes the game a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> um, oh yeah, they're, they're remaking Resident Evil 2, aren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah they are. Uh, no idea what the remake is going to be like, though, but there are already fans of Resident Evil 2 that are saying, I'm not buying this game if it doesn't have fixed camera! As if that was always the problem with the... I, I think we may have gotten into a discussion in something else that we, we may have talked about, but... Uh, uh, here's that cake. Don't eat I that would, cake. <laughs> yeah, don't eat that cake. That's it, a poison cake. It, it even looks a little more rancid than the last one. I don't know if, if it's a different... If, it, if it's a different... Uh, a different sprite but um don't eat it <laughs> it's bad um also i i must have fucked up the the um the the special uh thing for the last fight because i'm fighting the same guy again but thankfully if i if i did my work right yeah i just cut past it <laughs> so excellent yeah so yeah defend if you so if you go up against a lower ranked opponent you just have to defend your spot as opposed to going up against a higher ranked opponent so <laughs> yeah I when i got to this moment when i got to that moment when i saw him on the floor like that i i, I laughed like it's a little <laughs> yeah like i i love i i love this game's writing it's it's great so yeah <laughs> Never eat cake again. <laughs> that poor this guy. Is, can I just take this moment to reiterate what a weird plot this is to have in a Mario game? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we are in a in a in a in a like an underground wrestling tournament thing going on, dealing with fixed fights and poison cakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's actually it's actually very interesting because it's it's you don't really know which side is doing what because you're getting emails from this mysterious ex who seems to be helping you. You're getting emails from seeming from somebody who's somebody who's like sending you threatening emails. You've got somebody who sent you a poison cake and you find out that they're they're all different people. Like the the guy who sent you the the threatening emails does not is not actually the guy who sent you the poison ga- cake. Slight spoiler alert: That was Rockhawk being a dick <laughs> um, with the, with the cake, um, and X is a completely different character entirely. So, you know, it's just <laughs> I just I love how kind of like multifaceted it all is, and it doesn't ever end up being overwhelming too, which is nice. So. They're also managing to keep it in tone with the rest of the game, which is impressive. Yeah, it's uh, this is again like I'd say probably out of all the Mario games, yeah. this is. Not the darkest, because I think Super Paper Mario takes that cake. Eh, see what it is. Yeah, but but you know, yeah. here's, here's the thing though, because I this is something that I only ever really see in Japanese games, but they're really good at keeping dark tones in line with not dark tones. Whereas games from over here in the West, when they're dark, they don't let up. Yeah. And, like and they don't it, stop, <laughs> and that's it, honestly it's really important. Like, there's a reason why comic relief is a thing because if everything's so dour all of the time, it you don't ever really get a chance to really get to like the characters because well, you, you you need to. Well, I shouldn't say that, but you need to see multiple facets of the characters. So you need to see them happy as well as them being depressed <laughs> at their shitty lives. Yeah. But you know, that, that's it, it, It's also just a general tone thing because, uh, we tend toward, we tend toward, uh, edgy over here, like dark, gritty, realistic, edgy with only like a minor comic relief. Let's talk about, uh, well, uh, I was going to mention the Witcher, but that's, that's uh, actually a Polish game, but it, it, it well, does that, that, that's still technically the West. Yeah, but it, you know, it does the same general thing that we do over here in America with our games. Like, it, it, whereas in Japan, they're totally happy doing stuff like Earthbound, which is looks happy and cheerful and cartoony, and then when you actually get into it, you realize it's basically creepypasta the game. Yeah, I, I think in, in Paper Mario's sense, you know, the fact that all the dialogue is so funny, I think, a lot of the time, in that it's never too... It keeps the game from getting too serious. Even though there are plenty of points which are 
uh, really sad and touching. Uh, and yeah. just straight up disturbing, too, so... You know, there, there's all there's still that, but it, but it it reaches a balance that I feel is appropriate rather than just coming up straight up jarring. Yeah, it's not yeah. like it's not like you know we get a tragic scene where somebody's father is killed right in front of them, and then a clown walks in and is like, "Hey kids, it's like I know." <laughs> hey kids, I'm the clown that shot your father. <laughs> oh, just call me Chucklefuck. Oh, so you so you so Batman eighty nine then, huh? Kafka, you <laughs> bastard! <laughs> but um, Kafka the chuckle fuck. I should have known. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just you know I, I I get a bit uh I get a bit fatigued by overly dark games. It's like it's not like they're bad games at all. It's just no. There's I, an audience for it. Yeah, well, well, there's an audience for it, and quite often I'm part of that audience. But you know, it, it, it seems to be the only thing we put out over here it, lately. Yeah, that's um, why it's called levity. You're relieved. By you know things not being so depressing all the time. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like I keep trying to play the Witcher games lately. Yeah, that's probably why I mentioned the Witcher in particular. But um, I keep trying to play it, but I- I've played so much dark, gritty fantasy lately that I that I, I that I just get tired of playing the game way too early for such a good game. Even though the gameplay and the characters and the story are all really great. I just, you know, I, I feel like I'm in the mood for something else. I feel as long as I know what I'm getting into before I even put the game disc in, I'm fine with it. I'm not okay with, like, a, a franchise that I know is one particular uh, style of storytelling or genre suddenly decides to change it up under my nose. Mm-hmm. And I just don't happen to like that change in direction. Because yeah. I think that's the worst kind of Speaking scenario for me. Speaking of suddenly changing it, uh, for a change of topic, who's this guy? Oh, this is this... Dark Goo Patrol. He's the second to last um, fight in the in the Glitz Pit. So he's like the number two to Rockhawks number one. He's oh. really tiny. I, 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 I know. I, I, I used Yoshi's uh, mini egg ability, I think, to uh, take down his... Down. To shrink him down and take away some oh, of his... Man. His attack points because he does do oh. uh, a lot of damage, so I figured it w- it would be helpful. <sighs> and I just the wanted to show has... off. <laughs> I just the wanted... game has Final Fantasy's mini status. Oh god. Yeah, it's not as oh, and the curse is being helpful again. Odd, um, but it, it's not How as it's not as I'd say debil- debilitating as that because if I remember correctly, like mini makes you absolutely pathetic with physical attacks. Like you can't do shit. Um, uh, this ca- in this case, it takes you down by two, which is significant, but you can still, like, do damage, so... Ah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, but, yeah. The little plumber that could. <laughs> now, here, here's the here's the real question. Does it have toad status? There are toads in the game. No, I mean, does it have a frog status? Well, it would be pretty funny if there was a status which, instead of turning them into, like, a toad, it turns them into, like, a, this kind of toad! And then, like, yeah, they a, just... a toad stool. <laughs> but, no, I don't think I don't think Paper Mario has a, a status like that. Yeah, no. they, they should, they should though, just for the joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, but... Uh, I, I, uh, okay, next we're fighting Hawk, right? Uh, no, first we have to be a custodian and take down all the great Gonzalez posters in the lobby for some reason i don't know. x is weird <laughs> yeah x is really weird go back to fighting the 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 maverick menace you you jerk <laughs> what are humans Wasting fighting time. for they're fighting to be champ in the ring great gonzalez great gonzalez <laughs> <laughs> oh man 